Marketing is not a gimmick. Marketing is value communicated at scale. That's my definition. If I have something that is going to improve your life, and if I communicate it well to you so that it improves your life, and at scale, obviously, because it's not one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's just this broader thing. So that's why it's an art. It's the ability to have a conversation with many people that communicates value that changes their life. That's, that's what marketing is. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Modern Church Leader, joined by actually a good buddy, uh, Christian, all the way out in Austin, Texas, who is pastoring a church, but also runs a business on the side, and I think just loves kind of church marketing and communications like crazy. So we're going to have I a do. fun conversation today. Yes, 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 I do. I think there's a lot of magic in it and that uh, a lot of pastors ignore it, uh, unfortunately, and there's a lot to learn there. I, I mean, I think, yeah, pastors or just, just kind of church leaders, like you don't really hear the topic of like church marketing being no, a you thing, don't. you know, it's it, no, like, it's out there for sure. It's a thing. Um, I mean, we, we actually um, a acquired a company called that CC or that church conference mm -hmm. a couple years ago and their whole audience is church marketers, but it's like a niche thing. It's like a certain type of crew that's into that thing and it's just not like like my church doesn't have a marketer you know what i'm saying like i know yeah yeah so which is to uh, me it's surprising because a pa the job of, of a pastor the, the job of a preacher is marketing yeah 100 that's, that's what we that's what we do marketing and i think yep. the problem is that people have this it, it it's like a dirty word right in the church world right i literally had a a conference i was part of a conference uh, on church innovation and i think a buddy of mine and i i think both of us were speaking about it but anyway there was a q a at the end and someone in the back was like and it's this you know gentleman great guy but he was like you know i feel like we we don't need those gimmicks right and it's uh, the word of God stands on its own, blah, blah, blah. And, and it really resonated with me as something, a sentiment that is pretty prevalent. And the problem is that I think what people mis misassociate with marketing is that marketing is not a gimmick. Marketing is value communicated at scale. That's my definition. Value, which basically, hey, if, if I have something that is going to improve your life, and if I communicate it well to you so that it improves your life um, and at scale, obviously, because you, you, it's not one on one conversations, it's just this broader thing. So that's why it's an art. It's the ability to have a conversation with many people that communicates value that changes their life. That's that's what marketing is. I mean, well, that's listen, what preaching is. Every every church on the planet. I'm going to use a really simple example. Every church on the planet does announcements. Right. And that's marketing. Yeah. Doing an announcement is marketing. <laughs> Just fundamentally, you're like <laughs> yes, saying something is. about something that somebody needs to know about or go to yes. or attend or register for or whatever it is. Like you have an announcement and it could be as simple as like, hey, the potluck is coming, you know, on Saturday. Precisely. We're going to be here, here and here at this time. Like that's marketing. You're communicating, letting people know about it, hopefully trying to make it exciting so that people want to come. Yes. So, you know, we're all doing it. Every church is doing it in some form. But I do think that understanding what marketing is and, you know, not thinking it's, it's, it's like even sales, right? Sometimes people, whether it's sales and marketing in that bucket, they get icky feelings yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't yeah. have to be icky or bad or any of that, right? Well, it's in just, fact, if you want to have impact in this world in whatever area of life, and it doesn't matter which one, if you don't love, understand, embrace, and and improve the art of marketing, you will not have impact for whatever it is that you're having. You just won't. So it's much better to accept the very, very, very simple fact that value com communicated at scale is a ben is a good thing. As a matter of fact, Jesus did it, and the apostles did it. I mean, there's so many marketing strategies right there in the Bible. 
in the Gospels, in the Book of Acts, in the Epistles. That sounds like a book you need to write. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Marketing it's everywhere. strategies everywhere. from the it, Bible. It's everywhere. Absolutely. Technology. I feel like I should look at, that book might be out there. Someone probably wrote that. It's got to be on It's got to be there. Yeah, it's got to be there. I have a <laughs> list of things that completely correlate, and I'm not stretching it. They're, they're just there in the Bible. Right. right? So yeah, all of the yeah. methods that we use are in the Bible already. We just uh, sort of recognize them for what they are, and then we right. want to use them to so, uh, spread the gospel. And we're specifically going to talk a lot about like reaching younger audiences, effectively yeah. doing things online. But just quickly, you've been on the podcast before, but there might be some listeners that didn't catch that episode or don't know much about you. Like, give give us the, you know, how do you get into pastoring and church leading and thinking about marketing for churches and all this stuff? Okay, if you want to hear the full story, because it's a crazy, complicated, and confusing story, go to my uh, look me up on YouTube, and it's there. I have a YouTube channel called Headspace by Christian Ray Flores. Okay. And I and there's one there that is basically my life story. Like it took me forever to actually sit down and do it, but it's like a half an hour crazy crazy all of the turns and twists and turns, not all of them actually, but very high level. But basically the quick version of it is, is that I grew up on three different continents, ended up being in show in show business and I became a Christian at the height of my career as a pop artist. Um, in Eastern Europe, and uh, I became a Christian. I was like really wrecked by fame, as most people are. And uh, I became a Christian, and two years later, I felt the call to go in ministry and start preaching and, and leading churches. And I've led churches in Russia, Ukraine, uh, Philadelphia, Palm Beach, Los Angeles. And my last sort of uh, thing is here in Austin, Texas. We planted a church almost a decade ago called Tribe. And um, it was it was sort of on my heart to plant a church, and and we did it here. And one of the things that so that's sort of the quick thing. But we also have a we raise capital for startups. We have a marketing uh, company. One of the sides, one of the sort of focuses of the company, just because I'm I'm a pastor, is to help church leaders communicate better and for churches to grow and le- and reach more people, especially young people. So that's the quick version of it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the Destination currently Austin, Texas, Tribe Church, been Tribe at it for churches. ten years, um, yes. and and doing cool stuff. And some of this born out of uh, all the work you've done there, right? Like, yeah, because because what life. I what I've what I've learned when I became a a pastor, and I already come from show business, right? So I have all these bells and whistles and understanding how culture culture spreads, how to communicate. So it's a, there's a shift and a ripple effect, and it's this the amplifying sort of power of that kind of thing. So when I became a pastor, I, I was shocked, honestly, that, that churches don't use technology and the, the marketing to market the best thing ever, which is the gospel. Like there's really literally nothing more valuable on the planet than the good news of Jesus Christ. There's nothing of more value. It has eternal value. And that one thing we don't promote, don't amplify, don't use technology. Don't don't try to learn or master. I mean, to me, that's just, and it's in the Bible as well. Like the apostles did it, they totally did a lot of marketing. So I can give you a whole list of things that they did with those completely one hundred percent marketing. So you know, <laughs> so I think part of the re- it's part of the pain that I felt. I was like, oh my gosh, we need to we need help, and we need to help people. And we use that obviously when we planted our church here in Tribe and. And it, it, it's attracted a lot of young people. And we have already planted another church called the East Side here in Austin. And uh, we sort of used both my church building expertise and my marketing expertise to launch this thing called Third Drive Faith. And that's what we, we help people um, uh, with their marketing, basically. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Well, I mean, let's let's dig into it. I mean, I know you're you're releasing some like you've been doing it, but now you're kind of trying to produce some of this to make online courses and whatnot, but really helping churches with marketing and communications. Yeah. What, like, where does the church start or where, you know, where are you trying to jump in and help them get a vision for doing this better? Yeah. So we released this, uh, we just launched the course called Transformational Church Marketing, right? And I'm sure you're going to be able to provide a, a link um, uh, to, to the audience in whatever whatever platforms you are. Um, but basically, the reason we, we, we did that is twofold. One is we want to give access to, to the things that we know and we do all the time for churches 
to anyone in your in your church team. And, and I'm talking about anyone meeting, beginning from the pastor, anyone who's interested in how do we do this better? How do we attract more people, right? Uh, all the way to media teams, staff, whoever's involved in doing that. It's great for a team to learn together because you, if you want to perfect, uh, you know, want to learn a, a new ma- skill set, you want to do it with accountability and a plan and a strategy, right? Um, and also, when we do work for people, we don't really teach people what we know. We just do the work for them. So the course is an amazing opportunity if you're willing to do the work and to learn to actually be transformed. That's why we call it transformational on some, some amazing, powerful things you can do communication wise and strategy wise. And literally from the, from how you preach all the way to how you communicate to your team, to your congregation, to the outside world. So that's essentially why we create the why behind the course. But if you ask me, okay, what, what's the gist of it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, give give the, us the, like, what's the, what's the cliff notes books, you know, like we'll I can do give the cliff you the, notes here. And yeah. then, you know, when people want to go get some more, they can. So I have this framework that I introduced there because I wanted to explain it in a simple way is that the reason why more young people are not coming to your church is the exact same reason why um, I, uh, conversations don't happen at a, at a party or visiting, you know, visiting a, a, a friend's home. The exact same reason translates, right? So I'll give you a quick breakdown. So the, imagine yourself going to like a reception or like a barbecue or something like that, where people are just, you know, in different corners. Fourth of July, out. just happened. Yeah, fourth of, exactly, fourth of July, yeah. for example. And okay, so imagine you co- go into a buddy, a, a friend's, an acquaintance home, and there's all kinds of people you don't know, right? What are the things that attract you to people and the things that detract you from, from people. Um, well, if somebody's body language is not engaging, right? Like you're literally, you know, you're, you're like uninterested or you, it looks like you just rolled out of bed, right? And, and you probably won't like run to that person, right? You just won't, it just won't happen. Uh, you're, and the reason why that is, there's a, there's a psychological, the researchers have come, come up with this term called cognitive evaluation. So as a human being, you are a lot of the stuff that you do is an autopilot and you're programmed literally from like being a caveman to evaluate what's essential for survival and what's dangerous to you and then like remove everything else. That's called cognitive evaluation. That's why you make judgment calls on people at first impression, right? That's precisely why when you go to a reception, you don't just go roll out of bed and go to a reception. Why? It's not because you're a vain person. You already understand that first impressions actually matter, right? Well, the same thing applies to your website. If your website is confusing, people will not go deeper. It's a first impression. Like you might have an amazing community, great preaching, loving community, all kinds of cool stuff going on, mission work, service. And people won't visit because they'll check your website first and it's completely uninteresting. It doesn't stand out. The first impression matters. Mm -hmm. So you're confusing people with your website, right? Right. right. So the second reason in a conversation, same. I'll just pause. Like I've seen a lot of church websites and most of the church websites I see are pretty bad. Yeah. And not, it's not because the people behind them are bad. It's just like, for whatever reason, making a great website as a church, when you don't have people there yeah. that are really into right kind You're of online right. marketing and all that kind of stuff, if you don't have that skill set or those volunteers or whatever, you just end yeah. up with a really, you know, home, and what you're doing website. is you're literally you're detracting people from visiting you, especially yeah. young people because they care. Right, right, and and Even nowadays, if- like a lot of people are going to go find you online first, right? They're going to look oh, for absolutely. a church in their community. They're going to look for a church that has X, Y, or Z, and they're going to go spot you online before they show up. In the Even if they don't Google you, and if somebody, let's say you meet me at a coffee house and you go, hey, do you go to church? Yeah, I'm interested. Okay, here's the, here's, here's the URL uh, or here's the address. They won't come visit until they, they check out the website, yeah, the majority right. of people, right? So your first impression is confusing. Right. You're literally detracting people from coming to you. Right. Totally. To your church. And, and I have all kinds of research and examples where I would ask young people, why did you come? And I have literally quotes from people why exactly they, they pull out, for example, three websites. They decide on that one and they tell you why. Right. Okay. So the second reason is that you don't contribute to the conversation. 
like at a party, they imagine you and I meet and we don't know each other and you go, what's up, you know, and, and you start, you know, you, people do small talk because they want to find commonality. So you jump from one subject to another, to another, to another. And I basically just go, yeah, uh huh, whatever. What you'll, what you'll do is you'll move on, right? Because I'm not contributing to the conversation. Right. Uh, yeah. You're boring. Yeah, I'm not trying, to, wh- whatever. I'm like, not yeah, trying to find common na- language, right? So, for example, I love The Godfather, right? The, 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 I think it's the best movie ever made. So if somebody <laughs> brings out The Godfather, I will perk up, right? right? And what I'll do immediately when I perk up is that I'll start contributing to the conversation. Hey, did you know this little, I have all kinds of completely useless trivia about The Godfather. But if you bring up The Godfather because you're interested in it, and I sort of start contributing, you and I will, will, we're in the zone, right? On a website or on social media, how that looks like, especially with younger people, is that you talk about, you don't talk about people that interest young people. In your sermons, you don't talk about those things. Sometimes it's just taboo, actually. You know, the things that will make them perk up are not displayed prominently in any way, in any place you communicate. Which basically means you're not contributing to the conversation, which has the exact same effect. Like people will look at it, give you a blank face and move on. Right, right. right. What, just pause on that one for a sec. Yeah. When it, when it comes to uh, talking about things that the younger generations are interested in, give me, give me three, four, five examples of, of things that are relevant right now. Oh, absolutely. Should... For example, yeah. So, for example, uh, for for the youth in U.S. in the U.S., social justice, sexuality, gender roles, authenticity, community, mental health. Right. For youth at any time, at any age, ten thousand years ago and ten thousand years from now, sex, relationships, for, forging their own path, instant gratification versus long term gain, intergenerational re- belonging. Right. Where is my place in this world? That's like timeless stuff completely time and stuff. That's what they're interested in, right? So if that's not anywhere, that's not prominently shown anywhere, you, what you're basically where you're coming across as, as a, as a, as a church is self-focused. Okay. Here's, so this is the next thing. It's self-focused, right? So you're not contributing self-focused. Okay. What does that self-focused mean? It means imagine you you and I are hanging out and all I, I want, I want to talk about is me. How long will you stay in the conversation? Yeah, that doesn't. Uh, eventually, you try to find the other person to come join the conversation, or <laughs> exactly. I, I need or to like, go to the bathroom, or <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. So, but now think about a, a, a typical church website. What's what's this, what is communicated in a typical church website? Where do we meet? What do we believe in? What hours do we meet? What the address is? Who the pastor is? Who right. the staff is? What's our next sermon series? That's it. Right. You are coming across self-focused. It's the same effect that you have in a conversation. But if you display there a passion about something, involvement in the community, some some relevant ser- sermon series topics that would go, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that, you know, um, in all kinds of different ways. Right. Um, imagery that that displays a, a range of interests and multi-generational, multi-ethnic joy, engagement, you are not coming across as um, self-focused. You're coming mm-hmm. across as others focused. Right. You are in tune. You have the pulse. Right. You feel the pulse of a generation, right? So does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I, I want to go look at your website and see if you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, and you will. <laughs> and you will. Okay, so the... F- the fourth one, you want to hear about one, one yeah, more? Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. And I have the ultimate, the, four, the fifth one. The, the fourth one is you're not offering a, a map to the promised land, right? And mm. I'll explain what that is. Um, imagine if you are, if, if we're, you and I uh, are talking about the Godfather again, right? And, uh, and instead of just saying, here's some trivia, here's some trivia, isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that scene amazing? You shift to, what is this? What can we learn from that? And we can say, can you imagine, like, for example, I would say, this is a story of vision by Francis Ford Coppola. This is a story of endurance because 
people didn't want to use the actors he wanted to use, but he has this vision to use Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. And the only famous actor was Marlon Brando, and no one wanted to work with him because he was difficult. And he just insisted. He was like this bulldog. But also it's a story of collaboration, right? He would he would concede some things and really c- collaborate and 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 friendships of different people doing different things for the movie because no movie is made by the director and the lighting and the camera thing and, and how, how they were going over budget and how they would just press and plead. And, and it's this dramatic thing about doing something that ends up being an 11 Oscar uh, nominations film and a trilogy at the end. So it's a lot you can learn about leadership, about creativity about character, about perseverance. So that conversation is now giving you and I um, lessons and a, a map to the promised land. Ooh, this is, we, could do, we could be like that in our business, in our church, in our leadership, right? The reason I tell you this is an illustration. It engages you because you, are, you, let, you leave a conversation like that. If you have a, a barbecue like that, you feel elevated. You go, man, this guy's amazing like he really i feel i left a better person at the end of it right okay so how does that translate into church communication and marketing specifically is that even on the website you can say you can connect we we know that that you might not be interested in that you have all these reasons not to come but let us give you some maps to the promised land you can find belonging this way you can find first connections that way you can become a member this way we have a, a, a growth path. I think you and I sort of geeked out on that term, the growth path. Um, and this is how we're going to show it to you. And then the, not only on the website, but even, even in general communication to the church, let's say I preach a sermon. I preach a sermon that is way beyond just, hey, here's here's a great parable, and that's, this is how applied to, it, it applies to us. But I create a pathway in the sermon that applies to most of the people in the room where they can go, I can actually make these three steps and get much closer to being like Christ. That's a different kind of sermon, right? So you're, you're offering them maps, you're providing leadership in your communication, both on a sermon level and all the way to social media, all the way to content, right. uh, marketing, uh, right. website, everything. Does that make yeah. sense? Do you, yeah. Um, even that last bit you were saying, I mean, do you, in all of this kind of, and I'm thinking about it in the party, but I'm, I'm trying to apply that to my church's website. Yeah. How do you take it into the social realm, right? Like Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and mm-hmm. Facebook, like, you know, mm-hmm. how do you help churches understand how to use those platforms and have these conversations effectively? Well, I think micro content is the most obvious, right? So you have you most sermons you preach, they're whatever, you know, 20 minutes to 45 minutes. And there's whatever X amount of people who watch it live, X amount of people who watch it online. And then that is it. The shell, the value is is done. And if you ask more, I mean, even if you if you're a, a decent preacher, you know, there's so much stuff coming at us yeah. that by the end of next week, people won't remember what you said. No. <laughs> but if you, but if you maybe slice by the, the end sermon, of the day, maybe by the end of the if, day, maybe by the end of the day, if you're, yeah, like that's a bad day. Like that's really depressing, right? For somebody who's a preacher, like seriously, do I even matter? Like what I do, like, <laughs> does, it, does it matter? <laughs> but if you take a sermon and you find two or three one minute pieces and then you put a title of why this matters and then subti- some t- subtitles under it because people watch it on the phone without sound, you've now both extended the life of the sermon and actually reached people you haven't reached in the, in the original form of the, of the long form uh, thing, right? Um, all the w- that, all the way from, from that to calls to action and things like that that are much more, much more hey, we, we're gonna, we want to move you forward rather than just some inspiration and something random, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Yeah, I, right. wh- when it comes to these things, like how are you helping people like really practically on their websites? Like what did you do at Tribe Church in terms of what's on your website to, to kind of like check all these boxes? So what we did is, for example, we said, okay, most people are, uh, and by the way, we're doing a whole new version of the website that I'm super, super excited about that we're going to have the growth path very cleanly sort of, you know, explained. So beyond 
a path to membership and a path beyond membership, right? How do you make disciples? How do you mature disciples? So that's going to be much more, much more uh, well explained. But for example, on our website, what we, what we have is these multiple maps on how to connect, right? You can find a small group near you. You can go to a celebrate recovery if you have addiction issues. You can, um, you, we even have sort of a section where people like, hey, if you're interested in rock climbing, you know, send me an email. If you, I mean, there's like a whole section of interests, connection points that are just more connected to this. Th- this is the lifestyle that I lead. Maybe I can connect with you that way. Um, so, and there are multiple ways to even connect and reach out as well. So you, you, when you, when you're leaning in that way and you're thinking, hey, you might not come to a Sunday service, but you can have three or four other options that will interest you. And that's what you're doing. You're creating. You're you're showing a map to the promised land. Right. Right. No, I love that. I love that. And uh, so that was three, right? You hit three. Or- that was four. That was four. That was four. Okay. Yeah, that was four. And then the fifth one is sort of the, the ultimate thing, right? Are you ready for that one? This one? I'm, I'm ready. It's the ultimate. I mean. <laughs> it's the ultimate. Yeah, it's the ultimate. And and it's, and it's most people won't choose to do that. Most leaders won't choose to do that. But I, I'm, I'm pressing into it. So uh, imagine if we are at the same 4th of July party yeah. and, and we both find, uh, like the Godfather. And all of a sudden, Francis Ford Coppola walks in. What happens then? I mean, we run to the door. We run. And <laughs> yes. bring him a hot dog or something. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> well, what's happening? What's happening is somebody with a reputation walked in about something. That, somebody who's already added value to our lives has walked in. I don't need small talk because I know what, what I'm going to talk to him about. I don't need to check him out. Cognitive evaluation goes out the window because I don't have to put him in a box. I already know who he is, right? Uh, I already trust him on some level, right? So I will make myself, so it's probably going to be a crowd around that guy, correct? Why? Because of those things. So if you're a preacher and if all you do is preach on Sundays, and you don't create media, create media. You're not out in the community serving the poor. You're not doing something that is beyond the Sunday service box. You are you don't have a reputation. If you know, you have a reputation that is con- confined to your church. That's it. But beyond your church, you're, you don't have a reputation. And but that takes tons of work. It, it actually takes tons of um, humility. Because you, you want to serve people and you need to find out how you can serve them. It, it's a lot of intentionality. A lot, so I think if you're, it's, it's easier than ever to have a YouTube channel, a podcast, to have a blog uh, that people read. It's easier than ever to do those things. Um, and, the, and the problem is it's because it's so crowded, people get discouraged because it's so much work and you don't know what the, what the outcome is, right? Right. But I would what do I talk to... about? There's already exactly. somebody out there. I don't know how to do it. What's a microphone? Pres- or what, What's a microphone? Know. What's the setup? You know, what, the, what are the tactics? I don't even know. All right. right. And, and you basically give up, which yeah. is, I understand that. That's why I'm saying this is the ultimate, right? This, yeah. Most people won't choose to do that. But there's a benefit to that if you... If you apply yourself, if you lean in, if you have a, 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 a learner's heart and a passion to serve people, right? Then p- you will see people walking into your church who have already been served by you. Right. They actually come in the door because you have served them already. They come in the door because they already trust you. Right. Does that make sense? That's a whole different ball game. Right, right. Uh, and, know, and I mean, I think, I think you're right. And I, and I also think that maybe, um, if you think sort of very large church, mega church kind of pastors that have a reputation, that's kind of an easy one to go like, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, they have sort of a brand. They got to that place, you know, for being good at certain things. And yes. so they, they attract more and more and more people because I think people are feeling served probably by the content they see online. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm just yeah. very generic and they have a market apply- and they have a marketing department. They totally obviously. do. So I'm, I'm kind of generically <laughs> applying this. <laughs> so, right. But like, yeah. um, but you know, that's not most pastors, right? Like exactly. Most pastors aren't, aren't of that size of church with the big old marketing team and all the kind of things that go with it. Um, and, and we talked about how like it's, it can be hard for, 
your normal everyday, you know, 100 member, 200 member, 300 member church to, you know, for the pastor to think this way, you know, and or mm -hmm. to take action on it. So like, how do you help motivate pastors to do this? Or, or I can, how do yeah, you help? I can, what, when does it click to where they start? Okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to push through the pain of not yeah. really getting it or knowing how to do it, but I'm going to just go for it. That's an excellent question. And I think it's, I think, I think it's true that there's, you know, pastors that don't have a marketing department, they, they have many more obstacles, right? But I can, I can give you my reasons that I, that I tell people about. Um, a, it, a reason that is more of a um, motivation. If you have the heart and the passion to be in the city, serve the city, have the pulse of the city, you will do the work to find out what that is. You know, and, and it's it's a, it's a very different kind of thinking. It's it's not a thinking of people will come to me, but it's I will come to the people. And I think that's a transformational mindset shift in itself because it will make you preach differently. Just from the from the get go, because if you, you have that worldview, you will speak differently, you will do less sort of less lectures and more sermons. Because sermons are relevant, they like if you the greatest sermon ever preaches the Sermon on the Mount. See how much of the pulse of the people he's speaking to Jesus already has. You know the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. He knows exactly what his people are feeling right now, exactly, and then he's offering them a path out of it and and telling them why they're blessed, right? So it's a great example. I mean, the 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 sermon of of Paul in Acts 17 to the Areopagus. He addresses them with the language of of the wandering philosopher. He quotes their poets from memory. He acknowledges their desire to find God and their religiosity. And then he also he give, calls them to action to repentance at the end. That that's a that's a, a man who knows the pulse of the city which at the moment was at the peak, was at the peak of influence globally, right? In the Western world, at least. Like even the Romans tried to imitate the Greeks. He's speaking to the elite in their language, using their terminology, knowing their culture. And it's a powerful sermon because of it. So if you're a pastor who wants to get a pulse, you will be motivated to lean in and learn and get it. And it's a painful thing, but it's gonna transform who you are. And because of that, it's gonna transform uh your impact right yeah you will I mean, have love, exponential impact yeah I, lo I love just the idea of like go get to know your city or your town you know and like spend time with mm -hmm. business people and schools and government officials mm -hmm. and ptas Precisely. and and youth yeah, sports yeah. and just whatever you know there's so much going on in a town right um yeah. or in a city get get to know it and let that like be inspiration or like uh, food for like the content that you could create. And I mean, shoot, every, every pastor has one of these, right? Like they're all, mm -hmm. they've all got their phone. It doesn't have to be high, high budget stuff. It can be no real easy. It's, it's easier than ever before to create high quality content. If you have the, if you have the passion to do it and the, I mean, it's, it's hard work, right? But here's my encouragement. So that was my challenge to, to, to people, to pastors everywhere. I'm one of them. Um, here's my encouragement. We as pastors have no idea of the treasures we, we have inside of us. If you've been in ministry for three years, five years, 10 years, I've been in ministry for 25 years. I have forgotten more things than most people know about essential life skills, about relationships, about love, about friendship, about marriage, about parenting, about how to overcome um, adversity, how to lean on God, how to develop a prayer life, how to ha create healthy rhythms, how to choose good over evil. If any, any given pastor who's worth, you know, just a normal pastor has more to offer than they can even imagine. And the problem is that we don't think we do. We think we're limited to a Sunday service 
in a counseling session every once in a while. And it's just not true. There's no way you can equip people that way. You have so much more to offer than, than what you are sort of mobilizing right now. So mobilize. Take the treasure that has been given to you through God, study, seminary, experience, all of it, and, 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 and give it to people in, in ways that they can, they can understand what this is, what, how that can help me in a very systematic way. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's totally content that. creation. Yeah, totally. You know? Start the pastor YouTube revolution. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> we need that. I mean, yeah. oh my gosh. I mean, there's so much useless stuff out there. Yeah. <laughs> so much. Oh, right? well, man, let's, uh, let's, where can people go to like check out the online course if they wanted to, you know, dig in more? Well, you can go to, um, you can go to third drive media.com slash faith and you'll have our services. And at the very bottom of the page, you'll have a, a, a little thing basically because we do it. The, the three things we do with marketing is we can do it for you. You can do it with you and we can, you can do it yourself. We'll just teach you how to do it. So the courses you'll do it yourself. So, and I honestly think that doing, as I was developing this course, I got more and more excited because even when I'm doing something where our team is a professional award winning team, and you can see our work on, on third drive media.com slash faith. Um, when we do things for churches, we don't get to teach them these these things. So even if you, we're doing it for you, take the course because it's going to really transform the way you think about communication and, and marketing and stuff like that. So, and I'm sure your uh, your team can put the direct link as well on the on the on the episode notes and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We'll we'll put it in the in the show notes and on the blog and all the things. But thirddrivemedia.com.com dot com slash faith. faith. Yeah. Go go mm -hmm. check it out. Um, I mean, every church needs to be, get better at, maybe not every church, but lots of churches need to get better at kind of online marketing, upgrading their website, talking about relevant things in the digital space to attract a younger, like we were talking before, right? Like every church that I talk to is thinking about how to attract yeah. younger people and how to, yeah. you know, help them in this current kind of day and age. So I think it's a big deal and ha having a great website and making it relevant is a big part of that, you know? So yes, I, yes, I definitely is. encourage. Sorry about my dog barking in the background. <laughs> and no worries. I mean, I, I half expected a kid to come in during this episode, so I got lucky. Yeah. Um, but Christian, this has been great, man. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. Always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll, um, we'll get the episode out soon. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, however you consume it. Uh, we would love for you to, you know, leave a comment or like it or whatever you might do, write a review if you're listening to it on Apple Podcasts or anything like that. Um, but having a good time interviewing pastors and church leaders. So we'll catch you guys next week on another episode of Modern Church Leader. See ya.